Hi, in this video we're solving problem 3.2.8s. It's kind of got a long description and a little confusing too. I'll try to break this down. Find the effective annual interest rate for a loan that's on a constant principal reduction payment plan. What that means is the principal goes down by the same amount every year in this case. That's not usually what happens. For this payment plan, we're going to have the total payments equal to a given level payment plan, which is the usual kind of thing where your payments are level, but a higher and higher proportion goes toward principal each year. We want the two uh, total payment amounts to be equal for these two different situations and find the effective annual interest rate for the first situation. And actually, it's going to be option two in the problem statement itself. We've got a 10-year loan. That's 2000 it's repaid with payments at the end of each year, so as an annuity immediate. It can be repaid under one of the following two options. Option one, equal annual payments at an effective annual interest rate of 8.07%, so that's the usual kind of way that people pay back loans. It's going to result in level payments. Option two, installments of 200 each year plus interest on the unpaid balance at an effective annual interest rate of I. So the 200 goes toward reducing the principal every year, after one year, the balance will go down to 1800 After two years, it'll go down to 1600 1400 1200 etc. The interest paid goes down because your balance is going down. Therefore, your total payment is going down as well every year. In both of these situations, the sum of the payments are equal. The goal is to determine I, the effective annual interest rate for option two. All right, thinking about option one, we can write down our usual equation. The loan amount, 2,000, equals the present value of all the payments, and they are constant payments, K, as an annuity immediate. So I can write it this way. I can go ahead and solve for A, and then solve for K. And I'm going to need the value of K because I want to add up the values of K. I want to find 10K. All right, so find A first. 1.0807 is 1 plus I. Take its reciprocal, that is B. I need to raise that to the 10th power. Subtract from 1. Divide by 0 0.0807. There's the value of A. How about 6.6889? I'm not going to bother writing it down. K, I can find now by taking the reciprocal of this and multiplying by 2,000. Comes out really, really close to 299. I'm sure it, they want you to think of it as exactly 299. Um, I will write more anyway, just to play it safe like I usually do. And that's the value of K. So 10K is going to be 10 times that, 2,990. That's going to be 10K, the sum of all the payments. We want that to be the same for option two. So what about option two? Maybe we want to think about a timeline here for this one. Your principal reduction portion of your payment is the same, 200 every year. What about the part that goes toward interest? At the end of the first year, it would be the outstanding balance, the loan amount at time zero, times the interest rate, I. It'll be 2,000 I. Since your principal reduction was 200, the new balance right after that payment is going to be 1,800. The interest during the second year is going to be 1,800 times I. Then 1,600 times I, etc. At the end, we're going to have um, 400 I here and 200 I. All right, so what is the total amount of payment that is going to happen here under option two? Well, if you've got 200 times 10, you've got 2,000. That's the total principal. How much goes toward interest? It's the sum of these things. And those have a common factor of 200 I. I can think of that as 200 I times 1 plus 2 plus 3, etc., up to plus 10. No discounting going here, on here. Um, you could certainly figure this out with your calculator, but I hope everybody knows who's watching this. You should know the formula for the sum of the first n integers 
to be n times n plus 1 over 2. It's not too hard to derive, and it's something really everybody should know. So in this situation, n is 10, so I get 10 times 11 over 2, which is 55. 55 times 200 is 11,000. So I've got 2,000 plus 11,000 i will equal 2,990. I better write down that down, I think. 2,000 plus 11,000 i equals 2,990. And I think I won't bother writing down all the decimal places there. I need to subtract 2,000. 11,000 i is 990. So it looks like i is 990 over 11,000, which comes out to be exactly 9%, 0.09 or 9%. I'm sure that's how they would have the answer on a multiple choice exam. Okay, so a little harder than the last video, but really in the big scheme of things, not too hard.